Hello, our loves. You have reached Joanne and Elizabeth with World's Cup of Joe. Awaken your soul. If you're new to our channel, welcome. This is your new home for balanced, balanced, neutralized energy for your twin flame connection. We are here guiding you, teaching you how to embody, get into the energy of soul, which for those of you following us for a while, know that is the exact energy that brings in your twin flame. So we're here to show you how to do that. Joanne and I are both in permanent relating experiences with our twin flames. We have been through it all. We've been through the separation, the dark night, and we have learned how to not only understand this energy, but to master this energy. And that's what we're here to show you guys because the energy is very simple. And once you can learn it, you can understand how to work with it and permanently be in an energetic space where you can not only bring your twin flame back, but you can keep them in as well. So with that being said, we got a question. We want to tackle it for you guys. So here's the question. Why does it seem like my person isn't magnetized to me anymore? So I'm balancing the energy daily. It gets quicker and easier each time. I'm balancing the energy of my life and whatever shows up. My energy continues to be more peaceful, more balanced, more soulful. I spend a lot of time each day noticing the space between my thoughts, and I spend most of my day in some form of meditation. What seems to come up from time to time is the mind wondering why my person isn't around or communicating with me. Joanne, give us your take. So my love, the more and more and more and more and more and more, you no longer ask is when your person comes. I'm gonna be real. The more you're asking, the further they are. Because that is separation consciousness. I don't ask for my person. And when my person came, they were the last of my thoughts. So if you're gonna look for them, you're in separation consciousness. And you're essentially living in a future-based, faraway land experience. Because this here moment, right here, right now, is the most sacred moment. And so if my person is not in front of me right here, right now, that moment is the most sacred. I don't think of my person unless they're physically with me in my space. And even when they are in my space, I don't see them separate from me. So when you're asking, why is my person not being brought in? Why is my person not here? Why is my person not contacting me? What you're asking is seeing your person in the place of separation consciousness. The more and more and more you are no longer asking, the more likeliness they will be there. It's a freaking paradox, my love. And I can't take you there. I can't take you to this unity consciousness where I don't need my person. This is an energetic shift where I don't ask for my person anymore. And even if there is a part of me that does ask, I like watch it. So I want you to be able to sit with that energy that's asking for your person because that is not soul. Soul is never asking for your person because soul is your person. I really want you to feel that answer, my love. You are your person. So when the mind is asking for your person, I want you to be able to watch those thoughts and feel into the moment you're in now. And I want you to remind the thoughts that you are not separate from everything. You are looking for something that is not separate from you. And the more you are aligning with the part of you that is in the here and now, the more you are aligning with your person. And again, this isn't something you think your way to. You become your person. You become soul. You are one with it, everything, everything. 
and you're in acceptance with it because you don't need your person in the physical to know that you are one. When you reach the place of unity consciousness, you're part of everything and your person, your twin flame is you. You are the exact replica of you. So when you're asking for something that isn't separate from you, you're giving more energy to the part of you that is separate from you, which is mind, which is separation consciousness, and it is not your person. Feeling into something separate from you is only going to bring you more things that are separate from you. And this is how it works. I miss my person. I want my person. I need my person. Guess what the universe brings you all, my love. And this is just the reality. This is my tough love coming out. The universe, soul, God brings you the experience of guess what? Your person away from you, missing your person, being separated from your person. Guess what happens when you switch? You switch that energy of separation consciousness to feeling whole. And I want you all to close your eyes with me. Close your eyes with me and just feel the wholeness, the oneness, the being, the infinite source energy that is everything. And while I'm telling you this, I'm always aligning with everything around me. And I really feel into what's around me, right? So right now, I'm next to this beautiful like, tree that just looks like, I don't know, it looks like it's laying down on the ground, but it's not. And that's why I feel so one with it. Because to me, I feel like the things around me are a part of me and it's like everything around me is a story of the experience now where this tree is chilling next to me being with me and i'm one with it more than i'll ever be one with anyone else right now i'm more one with this tree right now in this moment than I've ever been one with anything else because it's enough. And I'm in peace with it. I'm so in peace with it that I don't need to hold my person's hand. I don't need to see my person. I don't need my person to show up right here, right now while I'm one with this tree to know that I'm one with my person. I'm as one with this tree as I am with my person who's not next to me. When you can fully embody the soul, love, source, energy that you are, which is your person, you don't need the physical aspect of your person to feel the wholeness and love that you are. So the question that's asking, why am I not bringing in my person, is the exact energy of mind, of fear, of separation. And I want you to switch and flip mind's question to, so what? Seriously, so what? So what that the mind is looking for my person? So what that my person isn't right here, right now with me? I am them. I'm as one with them as I am with this tree right next to me that's chilling next to me, being next to me. And when my person texts me, guess what, my loves? I have no urgency. I am not rushing to respond. I can wait all day, all night, not responding. I could literally just sit on that text and still feel the love that we are because I don't need to text them. I don't need to hear from them. And I don't need them to reciprocate the love that we are. But that is an internal shift of me being enough, being whole, being complete, where I don't need my person in the physical to feel my wholeness and love that I am.
So my question to you, my love, is if you are aligning with soul and being the soul that you are, tell the mind, so what? So what? So what that the mind is seeing my person separate? I am not the mind. I am soul. I am good in this moment here and now. I am not separate from anything and anyone, including my person. Just like I'm not separate from this tree that I'm one with now. And I also want to get to a place where I'm never looking for my person. Because looking for my person means my person is separate from me. And there's something somewhere out there that I need to have here for me to know I am it. It's external validation and completion of this journey. Why couldn't we just be okay with this here and now? Why couldn't it be, I'm feeling so good, I'm feeling so peaceful, and I'm okay right here, right now. I don't need anything. I don't need my person. I don't need anyone. I'm good. That. That's when your person comes. And this beautiful soul has surrendered and seen glimpses of their person And the mind is still doubting how it works. How can I see more of my person? Well, my love, every time you surrender, release, and let go, a part of your person comes. And guess what? The mind is looking for more and more and more. And your mind is going to keep looking. But until you can be okay with this here and now, and never look for your person and external, but feel your wholeness of being one now as soul until that moment comes your person's always going to be separate from you in the physical until you could get to a place where you you're okay I don't care if I see my person or I never see them again I would be okay I would be okay I have no expectations I have no preference I have no judgment because this very question has a preference this very question has a judgment And this very question has an expectation, which means you're not surrendered yet, which means you still have more surrendering to do, which means you can identify that there is still a part of you that is looking for your person. And you have to get to a place where you have to be okay whether your person comes back or doesn't come back. And that's when they come. It's a freaking paradox, my love. I wish there was another way. But it's literally your energy that brings your person based on when you truly surrendered your soul. You truly surrender to soul. And that is when soul can bring you your soul. Because surrendering is soul. Surrendering is letting go completely to the extent of never needing anything in return. Be okay with this moment now. And I let my person go completely. And I let him go all the time. I surrender him every day, my loves. I surrender him every day. I surrender him so much that when I even have a little bit of mind that wants to see him, be with him, stay home all day and never leave the house, I surrender that part too. That has the preference to stay home all day and be in the house. And I let it go and I release it so I can be back into this detached, surrendered state that needs no one, nothing, because I am everything. What do you think, my love? One of the hardest parts about this journey is when you know so much and when you know that soul alignment magnetizes your soul. And it's sort of like the question, but the opposite of it. So just bear with me because I'm just getting this download right now. The question that we have gotten that we've made other videos on of, can I be in mind about other things and not push my person? And this is sort of that same thing. I can be in soul about other things and still not magnetize my person. Well, why is that? Because how you are with other things is irrelevant to how you are with your person, both in the push and the magnetization of them. So where you can be in mind about anything else 
as long as it has nothing to do with your person, your person could still be right there beside you, next to you, as long as you're in soul with them, as long as you are interacting with them or energetically sending them no judgment, no preference, no expectation. Conversely, you can be in soul about everything else, which it sounds like is what you're doing. You're living, breathing, embodying that love energy. You're meditating, you're, you're aligning, you're doing all that. However, when it comes to your person, there is still expectation, preference, and judgment. You're judging when other people are magnetizing and telling you about it. And that was part of the question. We sort of, we, we made sure we summarized so all of you can relate. But there's that expectation of, I'm in soul most of the time, almost all the time. This is where my energy and focus is on my alignment. Where is my person? So you can sort of see, you can see how, even though you're in soul about everything else, you're not in soul about your person because there's still expectation, preference, and judgment. And that's the reason, my love, why you can't be magnetic if you're in that energetic space towards your person, regardless of how you are in all other aspects of your life. Just like, conversely, we just said, you can be in mind about every single thing in your life, but if you are in soul with your person, you are still magnetic to them. That is the hard part about navigating this journey, this connection, this energy, because it is so challenging to interact with the energy that is so addictive. It is something we were not prepared for. We were all sort of thrown in at the deep end and told, okay, you have to sink or swim. And us swimming every single day is us trying to align for us. Keep aligning, keep aligning, keep aligning. But with that alignment in regards to your person it has to be authentically for you. In regards to your journey, your alignment of soul has to be authentically for you at all times because you are one with the energy you are one with your person at all times. So saying, where are they in the physical is shifting back into separation consciousness. It is denying the part of you that is already together in the 5D, that is already together as one. And it is now embodying the mind energies that sees you as separate. It's going into fear mode. And it's saying, what am I doing wrong? soul sees you as one there is no difference so i i sort of liken this to how for those of you that know the law of one and raw what Ra says about us as humans he says we see you all as one energy the only thing that separates you all is identity well this same thing goes for you and your twin flame you are one energy the only thing that separates you is identity. And when you see your other self as the identity of their physical 3D self, you've now shifted into separation consciousness. Aligning with the part of you that is one, where the identities are irrelevant. The oneness is always, it's infinite. That is the part of you that is tapping into unity consciousness and when you tap into that, you will not need to see the physical of your person because you know it's merely just an identity of the 3D. And you already won in the 5D. And when you can shift into that, because that's not a thing you can think your way to. This is a feel your way to. Energy is about feeling. It's not about thinking. You can't think your way to energetic gauging. You feel it through resonance. So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to feel into the one energy and know that the physical of the person is merely just an identity that separates you two. But the energy is one. It's always one. It was one at creation. It's one now and it will forever be one. And you don't need the identity of the 3D 
to confirm your oneness of the energy that is your soul. Whoo! Man, I'm sorry, loves, but that just overtook me. <laughs> Don't know if you felt it, Joanne. Woo! Oh my God. I, to- I totally, like, I felt that love. I felt, I felt like this immersion of my one, like, th- this is what I really want you guys all to feel. I feel my one, like, source energy that's tied to God, right? And I'm sitting here and I'm like, you're missing, you're missing you. You know what I mean? Like, when you just had me tap into this one source, soul energy that is part of everything, I didn't even see my person, loves. Like, everyone is so busy looking for the physical aspect of their soul you're missing you stop looking for you you're already one you're already whole you are your person and i think the mind is thinking oh i'm in soul i feel soul well where are they that just shows you weren't aligning with soul for you you're aligning with soul for your person which means your intent isn't pure. And I would say you need to go back and realign for you. This is why so many people have so much success redoing the detox program again, right? It's so weird because it's like, how long do I detox? This detox is a detox for the rest of my life. Well, yeah, it is because the addictive energy is forever. And layers of addictive energy and layers of the ego that's being released is always a different element. So the part of me that needed a detox is always different. My levels of consciousness, my alignment with soul is different. And what looked like my first initial aligning with soul was what I thought was for my person. I'm sitting here recognizing at that first initial stab at detoxing, no, I wasn't aligning for my soul. I was freaking trying to get my person straight up. I was like, I don't give an F what anyone says. I want my person and I need my person. And guess what, love? It won't work. It's not going to work because soul knows. Soul knows you're looking for your person. Soul knows. You can't BS your freaking soul. So you have to really go within, get deep surrender your person and remind yourself I'm not aligning with soul for my person and guess what the next moment that I detox guess what happened I admitted to myself that I wasn't aligning for me and that's when I really had to get deep on intent that's when I really needed to make it about me and this is why intent is really really critical Because your intent has to be about you forever. So when I tapped into this oneness that Elizabeth brought us all in, where I'm like, oh, I'm sitting here aligning with the universe and God and my person without even thinking of my person. How does that happen? Well, because I am my person. They are me. We're one shared frequency that is already one. And I've embodied that so much to where I didn't even see my physical person in this alignment that I have with the universe. And that is what I want you guys to feel. When you're aligning with all, you are your person. And you'll never look for them again. But they are already with you. Always. They are already with you and they're always with you. And looking for them, even an inch of looking for them, is feeding the part of you. It's feeding the part of you that is still seeing your person separate from you. So shift it back to you. Shift it back to aligning with the part of you that is one with all, especially your person. Man, this is so freaking deep. These are good though, love. Like I want this beautiful soul to know, like we are so incredibly proud of you. We are so proud of you to be able to see the work 
the energies and shifting through these moments where you're losing your alignment and your intent is back on your person. Having these honest conversations with yourself allows you to know when you're shifting out of intent. And now going back to separation consciousness, separation phase one, where you're making it about your person. I'm aligning with soul for me. I'm never aligning with my with soul for my person because as soon as I do that, my person's going to run. I already know that. I don't align with soul for my person. Aligning with soul for my person is out of intent. I already know that. That's like engraved in my heart, in my soul, in my whole being. Because I align with soul for me. I promised my soul I was going to find itself for me. And if my person never came back, I would have been okay. And damn it, that that's when they came back. As soon as I released that they would never come back, I was okay with them never coming back. Or they do, and I didn't have any expectations, preference, or judgment. And that's when they came back. And that's when I realized I was really in this journey. So to truly, truly recognize your shifts and how they're happening, allow yourself to just be okay with this moment now and be truly in acceptance with the oneness that you already are without any physical need for your person. Be okay with this moment now. Be so surrendered with the now, so much so that like, so many people don't realize your person can call you today. Your person can come today. And then guess what? They come and you push again because you're looking for them. Do you see why your soul's not going to bring you your person if you're looking for them? Because you cannot balance your person when you're looking for your person because you are your person. It's a freaking like crazy like concept. I really want my person, Joanne. I really want to see my person. And we get that from clients. They'll say, I just want to see them one time just to know this is real. And they get what they want. They see their person and guess what happens? They're pushing. They're getting in mind. They're getting in the stories. They're trying to figure out all these things that even keeping them more separated from each other when all they wanted was to just prove to themselves that this is real, that all their hard work is working. And then they push their person again versus I'm aligning with me for me. I'm going to be with everything that's happening for me for me, whether my person is there or not. Oh, damn it. They're right here. Oh, damn it. I get an email. Of course. And then you go back into balancing this moment now, this moment now, this moment now, in every moment now. And that's how they keep coming, my loves. Your soul brings you more experiences, the more and more you're okay with this moment now without needing anything in the physical. Your soul brings you the experiences to balance in the now. We love you all so much. This video is very, very, very deep. If you can tap into the unity consciousness and feel into this, you're tapping into soul. You're tapping into the oneness. You're tapping into the part of you that is whole, is complete. And if there's even an inch of you that's still looking for your person in the physical, I want you to listen to this video again, my love. I want you to hear that balanced energy on the other side that is your person. And the part of you that's never going to ask where they are because it knows looking for them is then aligning for them, which will never work. You align with soul for you and only you. We love you so much. All you beautiful souls. Love you. Bye, love. Bye, love.